Daf Ein Gimel seventy three, and we are on Daf Ein Base Amid Base seventy two B, uh, the seventh line of the wide lines, and the third, the fourth to last word Yosef Rav Zera. We're in the midst of the sugya of uh Var Mitzvah. Somebody intended to do a mitzvah, made a mistake and didn't end up doing uh, what they intended to do. But uh, there was a mitzvah involved that Rabbi Yeshua says that is putter from a, a chatas on account of tot var mitzvah va asa mitzvah. And Rabbi Meir uh, is even more lenient. So Yosef, Rabbi Zeir, Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Yitzchak, Akilah, Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Yitzchak. Rabbi Zeir and Rabbi, and Rabbi, and Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Yitzchak were sitting on the porch of Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Yitzchak, the Yosef Ka'amri. And they were sitting and saying, Amar Rav Shem Lakish, in the name of Rav Shem, uh, of Reish Lakish, Rav Shem Lakish, Nitzchalaf leshpud shel neisar, meshpud shel tzli. Somebody thought that this spit of meat, that they, this this kebab, as it were, that they were uh, looking at and ready to eat, was roasted meat of kachim. And therefore, it's a mitzvah to eat it. And in fact, it was leftover kachim from a day before and is uh, and was not a mitzvah. Uh, and they ate it, chayib. so they were going to be held liable on account of that, even though they intended to do a mitzvah, they ate no sir, uh, they ate leftover kachim, which uh, they're not allowed to eat, and so they're chayiv. Rabbi Yechon and Amar, and, um, uh, and Rabbi Yechon and Amar, ishto nida, if his wife was a nida, baal, and uh, he um, had relations, and as the Gemara is going to say, that um, uh, there there was no um, no mitzvah in fact, and he intended to uh, to do a mitzvah, ended up not doing a mitzvah. So Chayvi has to bring a, a sin offering. Yuvim tenida. However, if it was a yavama where there is a mitzvah to uh, to uh, marry her. I, on account of that, she is the uh, widow of her of his childless uh, uh, brother. Um, so, if she was a nida baal, if he had relations, Pati is going to be exempt on account of that. He, uh, in fact, did do a mitzvah. So he intended to do a mitzvah and did a mitzvah, even though that it was a mistake to do it because he was she was asa. So, it could harm me. Culture came out. The, the, some say that Rabbi Yochanan for sure would say in regards to Nosar that that's considered uh, uh, that's considered uh, um, uh, uh, he, uh, um, Aser that he's going to have to bring the Mechaev that he's going to be held liable and have to bring a, a Chathas offering because there's no hint of a mitzvah there the um, Loyasa uh, mitzvah uh, is the Potter and some say that no, over there they would be it would be exempt. My time a hasam who the havale l'shayule. The reason is because it's not considered a ta'abit var mitzvah. He's not going to be considered that he made him that uh, 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 he, he did a mistake because he he, he should have asked. Um, uh, he should have asked her uh, whether or not uh, she uh, um, whether or not she was uh, in, in in a state of nida. But over here, the, he, he, it's not expected that he would have asked her um, uh, because it's uncomfortable. So what it says, um, Why is it considered that by his Yuvama, uh, Yibum is considered a mitzvah because it's reestablishing the household of his deceased uh, childless brother Anybody cohabiting with his wife is also doing a mitzvah. Um, uh, so the Gemara first thinks, well, the mitzvah would be because uh, um, they're, they're procreating. So if, so maybe it's talking about a case where his wife is already pr- um, pregnant. So uh, cohabiting is not going to be a mitzvah. And if she's a nida, so there's a prohibition, and uh, which is kares, and therefore uh, unintentionally it would be considered um, uh, unintentionally would be considered uh, um, uh, it, liable to a chathas a sin offer. And where it says, uh, 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 simcha says, no, there is a mitzvah in, in any case where there's the, uh, the uh, Torah obligation of a husband 
to make sure that his wife uh, um, enjoys their uh, cohabitation and, and that there's a mitzvah of uh, uh, ona of uh, in, in uh, uh, pleasuring his wife when it is her time. So the Gemara says, well, maybe it's shalib nasa. Maybe it's not when there's that obligation as the Gemara is, uh, has a list in in uh, Exubus, a list of various respon- uh, various responsibilities or times, depending on one's uh, job and availability of when he's responsible to be there for his wife uh, sexually. So what? said, um, that there's an obligation and any time if, uh, if a woman is showing interest that a husband should take care of her um, and, and uh, so the, his cohabiting with her during a time that she was Nida, inadvertently, he didn't realize she was Nida, would, would still be um, a, a mitzvah. Uh, the, so why is he considerate Tabid var mitzvah? He intended to do a mitzvah, but didn't end up doing a mitzvah. He ended up doing a mitzvah because, uh, because he, he was there for his wife when she wanted it. And must be that we're talking about a, that it, it was a Samach Levesta, was a time when she was expecting her period. And therefore, there is no mitzvah of cohabiting at that point on account of the expectation of the, of, of the um, period. And in fact, she had had her period and he didn't ask her. And therefore, it's a Tov Edvar Mitzvah. He intended to do a mitzvah, but it's not going to count as doing a mitzvah because she, uh, um, uh, there is no mitzvah at the, at the time of her vest. And uh, the respon- and in his essentially his responsibility he shouldn't ask. He should have asked. Well, then, as we said, the, the Yavama as well, he should have asked her whether she was a need or not. So Yomar says, no, Yavimta buzzes me not. It's a new, um, it's, it's a new relationship, and therefore it's understandable that he would be uh, ashamed and, and, and uh, uncomfortable asking her if she uh, had gotten her period. Ishta, la buzzes me not, but not so with his wife. And Rabbi Yochanan says that it does count as a dvar mitzvah. Um, uh, Kaman, whose opinion is this? Is it according to Rabbi Yosi that Tanan Rabbi Yosi Amiyon Tavarisha Shachag Shachalis B'Shabes? If somebody, if it's the first day of Sukkot, and uh, even though on the first day of Sukkot you're supposed to take the lulav and esrog, but since it's Shabbos. You don't take the lulav and esrog. And the reason why we don't take um, the lulav, uh, we don't shake the lulav on the first day of Sukkot if it's Shabbos, is on account of that somebody may carry it in the public domain and uh, um, and transgress carry. And this person indeed did that. He took the lulav on the first day, intending to do a mitzvah, and. In fact, uh, would have fulfilled the Torah obligation with that, but he ended up also transgressing, carrying it in the public domain. So he's going to be exempt because uh, even though that it's prohibited, but it's count- it counts as if he carried it with permission, meaning because it was trying to do a mitzvah, and uh, um, and that's Tabit Var Mitzvah, Vasa Mitzvah. In fact, he did do a mitzvah. So why? Um, uh, so that would be the exemption over here. So Gemara says, no, Dilma Shiny Hasam, the Zmane Baal. Over there, the reason is that today is the, t- the day for the mitzvah, and therefore it's considered um, uh, that he's trying to do a mitzvah, and that's why he's exempt. So it must be the opinion of Rabbi Yeshua in regards to a karma, um, that where in our Mishnah he said that if, he, if you brought a karma, uh, let's say a shalomit on the 14th day of Nisan, and you brought it as a carbon Pesach, that it counts as you intended to do a mitzvah. And in fact, you did do a mitzvah because any other carbon brought as a Pesach, besides Fachatas, any other carbon brought as a Pesach on, uh, on the 14th will count as a valid carbon. And uh, so you will have fulfill, fulfilled the mitzvah. Uh, and this is the concept that uh, it, you intended to do a mitzvah, even though it was wrong. Uh, and you ended up doing some sort of mitzvah, so it's going to count. And where it says, There too, 
that no, our mission also, there's a very specific time. It's the 14th in the afternoon. There are a lot of carbonos to do. So it counts as the time of Pesach is um, uh, uh, um, a, a pressure. And so therefore he didn't check to whether this was the right thing to do. Belaker Bishua de Tinukas. So it must be Rabbi Shua in regards to the two uh, babies that need a bris. Um, so Yomar says, there too. Hasam Namis Manibal. There too, there's a time crunch that today is the day to do mitzvah. And so that's why he didn't ask. And that's why it counts as a valid mistake. Velikar Bishua de Truma. So must, here's a new scenario. In the case of Rabbi Shua of Truma, the Tanan we learned. Somebody is eating Truma, uh, thinking that he is a Kohen. A valid Kohen. And find out that even though that his father was indeed a Kohen, but his mother was a divorcee or, or a Chalutza, which is somebody that had, um, had to have Yibum and was exempted of the Yibum. Um, in any case, so his father, the Kohen, was not allowed to marry his mother and did. And so therefore that invalidates his, his, his Kahuna. He's not allowed to uh, eat Teruma, but he already had been eating Teruma. So Rabbi Leza, Mechaev Karen Bukhamish, Rabbi Leza said, okay, so then you have to pay back Teruma uh, the principal amount plus 25%, which is Allah Hak fifth. And Rabbi Shua paid it. And Rabbi Shua, the, Rabbi Shua um, exempts him because he intended to do a mitzvah. He was trying to eat Teruma. So the Mara Dilma, there too, maybe we can say, could the Rav Beva Barabai, like uh, uh, Rav Beva Barabai explained, Dam Rav Beva Barabai, but Truma Be'er of Pesach, the Zmane Bol, there too, there was a time crunch. How so? It was Teruma of grains uh, that had been turned into chametz, And so let's say it's Teruma bread. And it's the morning of Pesach, uh, the morning before Pesach. And so he's trying to get rid of the chametz. And, and there's a time crunch. You, you, the the, the uh, Chametz Erev Pesach, uh, it, it really, you have to get, yeah, um, you have to get rid of it uh, right away. And so therefore, um, there too, there was a time crunch. And so it's uh, understandable that he didn't check in to see whether he's allowed to eat the Teruma or not. And, and that's why it counts as a, uh, it counts as a valid mistake. Whereas if it, there was no time crunch, he had all the time in the world to eat this teruma, he should have checked and see, and, and assured that he was allowed to eat the teruma. Yes, Michael. Could you speak out how, how, how is eating teruma a mitzvah? Sorry? How is eating teruma a mitzvah? I can understand it's a right that he has. He, he's allowed to eat teruma because he's a coin, but, but where do we see that it's he's it's, it's, it's to eat teruma? It's it's a it's a form of kachim, and the kohen has a mitzvah of eating kachim. We saw that earlier in the mesechta a couple of times. I yeah, I'm just I'm just I'm not clear about I'm kachim. That's that's it's it's the kapara of the of the person who's bringing the 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 carbon. No, I mean, that, that that's that's where we see that the kohen gets to eat it. But uh, the the uh, mitzvah of eating kachim is to uh, of teruma. Uh, the Torah says that you shall eat it. I think we saw something. There's something. There's, there's eating teruma in the gevulin is. So maybe that's what it is. That that's the that that's all right. Yeah, we saw that earlier in the Gemara. That, mean, it, that, that it's a mitzvah to eat. If he he doesn't like teruma, I mean he has he's to eat teruma. teruma is not. Truma is not a, 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 it's not a particular thing. It's, 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 a, it, it's a separation. It's like a tithe, a, a, a separation of 2% that's taken from many different, uh, uh, right. I, I don't understand what it would mean that he doesn't like Truma. I mean, uh, he doesn't like any fruits and vegetables. He's, he's, he's a nuzzer. Sorry? He, he's got a, he's a nuzzer, so he doesn't drink wine. He, he's got high cholesterol. He doesn't, he doesn't use oil. I don't know. There are other foods. Okay. Right. Uh, um, it, it could be a particular thing, uh, uh, you know. He doesn't eat. That doesn't mean it's not a. a uh, uh, there's no. There. I think what you're. If I understand what you're asking is, is there an, an active um, obligation to eat every teruma that comes in front of him, or is it a a a, 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 um, a, a mitzvah fulfillment? There are some concepts of a fulfillment mitzvah. 
if he eats it, he fulfills a mitzvah, but there isn't an obligation to eat every bit of truma that comes in front of him. I think that's what you're pointing that's at. What that's what I'm looking for. If he never ate, in other words, if he never ate, if he never ate truma as long as he lived, is, 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 did he did it? Was he violating a mitzvah? I mean, no. I think that's what the, right. That's what I'm addressing now. So it's not an ob- obligatory mitzvah. It's a fulfillment mitzvah. A mitzvah. If you do it, it's a fulfillment. Uh, uh, there's no obligation to wear a four cornered garment to eat uh, and then put the, uh, and put four uh, tzitzis on it. But anytime you have a uh, you have a four cornered garment with tzitzis on, you fulfill a mitzvah. Um, is this a little different? But that that concept there's a mitzvah kiyumis. So when it, the the point is that he intended to do a mitzvah of eating teruma, which is a mitzvah, and he would fulfill the mitzvah had he eaten it correctly. And uh, the problem is that he's not a kohen, and so he he never had the mitzvah, but he intended to do the mitzvah. Um, inami. So Rav Beaver said that maybe this is the morning of Pesach. So so he's under a, a, you know time pressure to to complete eating the mitzvah. So he didn't have time to check whether he's allowed to. Uh, inami shiny truma the ikri avoda, or truma is is uh, uh, different that it's not only um, uh, a mitzvah; it's also considered a service of uh, the coin's service. And the reason is, uh, and and the reason why he's going to be exempt over here when he thought that he's a, co- a valid coin, is because there is a special teaching to tell us that if a coin thinks he's a proper coin and does the service of the Beis Hamikdash, and subsequently finds out that his father, who was indeed a coin, had had uh, married uh, a a divorcee, which he's not allowed, and that invalidates his status as a coin. That retroactively. Uh, the the work that he had done would not become invalidated. It remains kosher. The Tanana, as we learned in the Mishnah, somebody was in the middle of doing the service in the Beis HaMikdash. And finds out that his mother was a divorcee. That uh, the retro, the, the mizbe, whatever he'd done, the service he had done retroactively is going to be invalid. However, Yeshua says it counts as valid. On a basis of this uh, 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 pasuk, I'm reading in my time is Rabbi Shua, and as the Gemara explains, what's the reason of Rabbi Shua? The Sifra it says, Baruch Hashem Chelo Fal Yadav Tirtze. Hashem blessed his 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 work, his his might, and uh, the actions of his hands um, are are willed, are accepted. And Teruma Avoda. And where is it that Teruma counts as a service? So we understand that the service Rabbi Shua says would count. And, and and still be considered as valid. How do we know that even eating truma that way? The time we learned, Rabbi Tarfan, It was a story where Rabbi Tarfan didn't show up one evening in the uh, in the Beis Hamidrash in the study hall. In the morning, Rabbi Gamliel met him and he said to him, What was it that held you back from coming to the academy last night? He says, I was doing a service. I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean you did a, 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 a service? The base of Mikdash is not there. What, what do you mean you did a service? Uh, it says, no, but it it, uh, it says in the verse, and now we're on Ayin Gimel Amad Aleph at the top, matana the, a, a, a service of the gift I give to the Kohanim. So we see the matanas kahuna, the gifts given to the Kohen, the various gifts, Teruma is one of them, um, uh, is, a, uh, uh, is a form of service. And it is somebody who's non coin that comes close to do this is going to be held uh, accountable. So, so we see that the eating of Teruma is e- equal to the um, eating of the, uh, uh, to, to the service in the Besam Mikdash. In any case, that's why that would count as a valid uh, avoda. In any case, so we have various cases, either Rabbi Yochan or Rabbi Rishon Belakish, where there's a question of somebody intending to do a mitzvah, whether that counts as a mitzvah having been done, um, uh, if if he could have or should have asked and figured out whether or not he was held, uh, he's allowed to do this mitzvah. The 
um, the Mishnah, uh, the Mishnah went on and said if somebody did uh, brought a carbon on Shabbos in a case where it was brought with a certain invalidation, so uh, the Mishnah had said that that would that would uh, uh, invalidate the carbon. If and since it invalidates the carbon, he transgressed Shabbos without the purpose of a mitzvah, and as such, he's not only did he not fulfill his mitzvah of a carbon Pesach, he also is held liable for breaking Shabbos and. If and since he did so inadvertently because he tried to do a mitzvah, he he has to bring a sin offering. He has to bring a chatas for inadvertently breaking Shabbos. So shachta shaloy la'echlov. One of the lists in the Mishnah says that if he brought the carbon Pesach, but he intended people who all the people he intended for are people that cannot eat the carbon Pesach, which we saw earlier in a Mishnah invalidates the Pesach. The Gemara says, "Pshita, even the Hasam puzzle. Since we learned earlier, that's an invalid carbon pesach hachachayiv. So here on Shabbos, he would hell, he he has to bring a sin offering for it, for it transgressing Shabbos." So the Gemara says, "No, we needed to teach you this. You're right; it's obvious. But we need Mishum the Tanah Sefer Pater, since we uh, we the next step in the Mishnah says that if he intended for people that could eat and people that cannot eat, it's going to uh, be be a valid carbon." And uh, therefore, he's going to be exempt of uh, achatas because he didn't break Shabbos. So that's why the first part also, even though it's not necessary, uh, the Mishnah nevertheless mentions it and says that you're responsible uh, for a sin offering for Shabbos, achatas. But this too is already uh, understood uh, alone. Mishum the awesome kasher. Since in the previous mission we said that it's a valid carbon if you intended when you brought the pesach for people that can eat as well as people that can. Um, uh, so it's a kosher carbon. So for sure he'd be exempt of a Why he's not breaking Shabbos if he brings a valid carbon? So rather, since we in the previous mission, uh, at the beginning of the parak, the previous mishnayos, we had a list of. If you intended for a different carbon, that invalidates it. If you intended for people that cannot eat, oh, it, it invalidates it. If you intended for some people that can eat and some that can't, it, it's a valid carbon. Uh, so when it comes to Shabbos as well, we started off with saying that you you intended for the wrong carbon, it's going to invalidate it, and then you transgress Shabbos and you have to bring a sin offering. So then we went through all the cases of the previous case. But what do I need the first case for? Even that itself. What I need to tell you that if it intended for the wrong carbon, that it, you transgress Shabbos. We needed it for the reverse case where somebody brought a different carbon for the intent of it being a carbon Pesach, where Rabbi Yeshua is going to exempt him on account of that Tobedvar Mitzvah, a mitzvah where he intended to do a mitzvah and indeed did a mitzvah, even though he wasn't supposed to do it, that he would be exempt on account of attempting to do a mitzvah. Um, uh, uh, so too, and uh, um, and Rabbi Eliezer disagrees. And so therefore we needed that case. And so once we needed to explain that there is this concept in Shabbos, we already brought all these cases. Amr Avuna Barchinen el Avuna Barchinen said to his son, Ki azas akame de Rabbi Zirika. When you go to Rabbi Zirika, Rabbi Zirika was one of the elders of uh, the Chachamim in Bavel, who ended up going to Eretz Yisrael, and so he said to him, when you go to Eretz Yisrael, and you're going to meet Rav Zerika, one of the, uh, one of the uh, elderly sages, uh, ask him this question. Uh, according to the opinion that says in Shabbos, we know that there are 39 principal malachas on Shabbos. Well, each one of these would only be considered a... Um, uh, a transgression, and you're liable on Shabbos for a Torah transgression of doing them if you do them in a constructive way. In a destructive way, you're not going to uh, transgress Shabbos. So um, uh, you, you throw something into the, uh, into the oven uh, to, to destroy it, and it ends up uh, first before destroying it, baking it. Uh, that's not going to be considered um, baking, because you were destroying that item. Many uh, examples like that. Um, so, so uh, um, any to always for Shabbos, it needs to be a constructive work. Besides for, there's a, a in regards to two things, where uh, it would seem 
that their ver the very nature of that act is destructive. And therefore, even though you're doing it in a destructive way, that's the nature of the act. What are the two? Uh, um, Mavir, somebody who ignites a fire. So typically you would think that it, fire consumes. So lighting a fire is by its very nature destructive. And Mavir, even though you're destructive, uh, you would transgress the Torah pro prohibition. As well as Chabura, making a wound, uh, Shechting, right? So uh, typically that's a, an act of destruction, of damage. And per, uh, perhaps you're responsible even if it's destructive. But according to the opinion that says that even making a wound has to be constructive, that means you're only going to be chayiv if you actually shecht, which makes the food edible. So that's a kind of death or destruction that really brings about construction because it, it makes something permissible. So that's that's going to be a total transgression. But but killing something for the sake of killing it, or where you 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 you're not actually making it edible. So you so you found an animal that's diseased in your in in your. Uh, um, in your herd, and you have to kill it for in order to stop the spread. Uh, and so uh, that would be a a, a, a um, destructive act. But well, maybe it's constructive because it's stopping the spread. So that's really the case that we're looking for: is where is uh, uh, where is the construction here in the in the shechting of this animal because it's an invalid carbon. So shechta shaloy la'echlov in our Mishnah where he says that, according to the opinion, that says that it has to be a constructive act. According, in, in our Mishnah, he shechted the carbon Pesach with the intent of it for people that cannot eat it, essentially invalidating the carbon. So he shechted, it's true, he did a transgression on Shabbos of, of uh, shechting an animal, but it was destructive because in the end, it's an invalid carbon. Shaloy Lech of why is he held liable for a, a, a bringing a chatas offering, matike? Uh, TK, what what construction did he construct here? What what fix did he do to this animal that that it should, he should be held liable for? So the Gemara says that it, in, even though we said it's an invalid karman, there is a certain level of validity to it. Meaning, we, w w w there is a uh, discussion in the Gemara in Zvachim about im alu lo yerdu, certain ty certain types of invalid karman even though that it's considered invalid, if you ended up doing uh, all the parts, so you shafted it, received the blood, spritzed the blo uh, blood on the mezbeach, you took the limbs uh, that was supposed to go on the altar, on the mezbeach, and you put it up on the mezbeach. So in certain cases, you say, look, this is invalid. You have to remove it. But in this case over here, where you brought a carbon Pesach uh, with, the wrong in uh, with the wrong intent, meaning the intent of people that cannot eat it, the parts that go on the mezbeach im olu, if it went up on the Mizbech, you don't remove it. In other words, it's valid enough that, uh, that if you've already done it and put it up on the altar on the Mizbech, you keep it there. So that's some level of validity that's already been brought. And so it's constructive enough that it, 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 even though it's invalid carbon, it's valid enough that if you put it on the Mizbech, it remains, and that's considered constructive. What about this case? He shechted it, and he finds that it, it has a blemish. Uh, Chayev, why is he responsible over there? Ma tikin tikin. What 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 tikin did he do there? What what's constructive there? So again, the the Gemara says it's talking about a type of blemish. But dukin shabayin, it's a blemish in the eye that libid Rabbi Akiva, according to Rabbi Akiva, the Amar Amalu Leirdu, who his opinion is about a minor blemish uh, like that, which is in the in the eye. That it's even though it's invalid as a carbon, if you ended up putting it on the mizbeach, it remains there. So it's valid enough that uh, that if you've already done it ex post facto, it's going to count as a as a, val, a, a valid enough to be on the mizbeach to remain on the mizbeach. So so that can, that's considered a a form of construction. What about shachta venim to the next part of the Mishnah said that if you shechted it and you found that it, it had a, 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 a hole in the heart or something like that, so it's it's a terefa, and it, and therefore um, uh, it's invalid. Nevertheless, you're going to be exempt on account of that you couldn't have known habagolu. Uh, but I can infer from that if it had a, a, a injury on the outside where I could have known that it had that it was a terefa, that chayiv. 
that it would uh, I'd be held uh, uh, liable for breaking Shabbos by shechting this offering. But mati kintikin, mati kintikin. What what fix did I do? What in what way was this act constructive? If it's an invalid carbon, so nothing constructive happened of it. She says no, I did because uh, if it had died on its own, it would be nevela. And there's a, even though nevela and terefa are both non-kosher to, to eat. But Nevela, road killer, when it dies without a proper shechting, the, there is a form of tuma that applies to it as well in carrying it or in, in other forms. So there is a form of tuma. But now that I shechted it in a proper way, even though that it is terefa, it's not allowed to be eaten. But nevertheless, it, is, uh, it, does, it does save it from that tuma. And so there is something constructive that was done. Maskif la Ravina, Hatani Ashechet, Chatas Beshabas Bechutz, of a Dezara Chayva le Gimachatas. The Brysa teaches if somebody uh, um, yeah, wins the triple negative crown, that somebody shechted uh, a Chatas a, a offering. And a Chatas offering um, is invalid uh, if, if it's, if, if, even if it's done for something else. Um, we're, as opposed to our, our case. And shechting a chattas offering, um, uh, so he, he brought this chattas offering on Shabbos, which is a transgression of a, uh, a kares prohibition. And so if he did so inadvertently, he has to bring a chattas offering. And he did so bachutz, and there's a prohibition of bringing uh, kachim, uh, um, a sanctified uh, karbonus outside of the Beis HaMikdash. And he did so, he brought it outside of the Beis HaMikdash. And not only that, instead of bringing it to Hashem, he did so, uh, he did an act of idolatry. So three kares prohibitions, uh, which means that for each one, he would have to bring a chatas, a sin offering, if he did so inadvertently. Chayev, he has to bring three sin offerings. Now, for the avodah we understand he I did idolatry inadvertently. And for bringing a, a, a kachim outside of the mezbech, I understand, it, 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 outside of the base of mikdash, uh, that's kachem achutz, but Shabbos, Shabbos has to be constructive. In which way is this constructive? And you can't tell me that uh, there's some sort of benefit uh, to it because Avodah Zarah is prohibited in benefit. So there's uh, actually no value in the act at all. So Matik, Amar of Avira, so Avira said there is a, con- a constructive value to it. That uh, the halacha is that not only is the not is a Jew not allowed to eat this animal because it was, he can't benefit from idolatry uh, that was gifted to, uh, to an idol? Uh, uh, but even a Jew, a non-Jew, may not eat uh, uh, the um, a, the a limb from a living animal. A non-Jew is is what are the mitzvahs, the seven mitzvahs that a non-Jew has, and um, here by shechting it, and he has uh, benefited, even though he didn't benefit himself. There was something constructive, and now that a non-Jew may benefit from this or eat this, um, he will not transgress Eva Menachai. The Mishnah said, if he shechted the animal and then later found out that uh, all the people that were designated to eat this carbon had had either moved to another group or had become Tame, etc., it's essentially this carbon Pesach had become a, a, a um, an ownerless or, or or a groupless carbon pesach it had nobody attributed to it, and a, a, essentially is uh, um, not a carbon pesach anymore. Nevertheless, since he didn't know, uh, he's not going to be held liable for transgressing shabbos. But the Gemara says, but what is the status of this carbon? Normally, we say a carbon pesach, something that's dedicated for a pesach offering, that it's either past pesach or uh, or um, it, it, it's before Pesach, or there's no one to use it as a carbon Pesach. So then its status is a Shlomim, because Pesach is in the general category of Shlomim, or the family of Shlomim offerings, peace offerings, within which there's the thanks offering, and there's the Pesach offering, and others. So there's, this is a, 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 a Pesach is a Shlomim. So when Pesach is not, it's not a Pesach, uh, either it's not the day of the 14th of Nisan, or even on the 14th of Nisan when there's nobody left to, to use it, so it becomes a shlamit. Does this require a, a um, active statement, uh, which we called earlier Akira, 
the Gemara is going to call it here, that here, you uproot it from Pesach and, and state that it's a Shalomim, or does it, um, uh, does it um, de facto become a, a, a Shlamim? Does it uh, just revert to being a Shlamim? And uh, uh, the Gemara is going to try and prove this from, uh, uh, from other cases of where we, do we say that it becomes a, a carbon that becomes something else. Does it become that automatically? Is it, does it just by default become that? Or does it need an Akira a statement? And that's going to uh, be relevant to our, uh, um, to, to our Mishnah, as we'll see, because in our Mishnah, he had no idea that it wasn't the Pesach anymore. Um, and, and, and if not for the fact that he didn't know, it would have been considered bringing a shalomim as a Pesach and, and invalid. So what's the, what's the explanation? Amar Avuna Amar Rav. So Avuna said in the name of Rav, another case where something uh, is a, a, an originally one carbon and it reverts to being a different carbon uh, when not necessary anymore. Say Asha. There are two types of sin offerings, well, multiple types, but two categories of sin offerings. Chatas, sin offerings that come from inadvertent actions, and Asham. Uh, uh, um, sin offerings that come for specific uh, types of actions. Some of them are even intentional um, or unknown whether it was a sin or not. So these are asham, a, a category of different types of sin offerings. Shenitik l'ri'ia. And there are, uh, as a chatas offering, uh, chatas is very specific to its owner with its intent. It has a very narrow um, uh, uh, um, uh, attribution to its owner. And if the owner already uh, fulfilled his obligation with another carbon or the owner died, so the, the there are specific halachas for chatas, but for an asham, it, it's, it's a little bit broader besides for one opinion who says that it's exactly like a chatas. Generally, we say it's broader and then therefore it could be other carbonas. So an asham, which uh, the owner, let's say died or the owner uh, 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 had lost this one and brought a different carbon in its place and now find, finds the carbon. So what do we do with this um, Asham sin offering um, that now no longer doesn't, uh, has an owner or no longer is necessary for the owner? So the halacha is nitek l're'ia, meaning it has to go into a pasture, a special pasture within which it's going to get a blemish. And once it gets a blemish, it's no longer worthy as a carbon for its designation. It then gets sold off and the money is used to buy an Ola, an ascent offering. So essentially it becomes from, it changes from a, a sin offering where it no longer has an owner that needs that sin offering. It then it, 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 uh, reverts to being or becomes uh, a, uh, an ascent offering, an Ola, which all goes up on the altar, on the Mizbeach. And this person, instead of waiting for it to get a blemish and go out in this special pasture, get a blemish and then be sold off and, and uh, um, and and um, uh, uh, um, then with those funds, they brought, they buy a carbon pes- a carbon ola. He went ahead and brought the carbon itself that no longer is valid as a sin offering because the owner already is atoned for. Uh, he, he goes ahead and brings it as an ascent offering instead of waiting for the three-step process of sending it out to pasture, getting a blemish, being sold, and using those funds to buy a carbon ola. Um, so v'shachta is stam, and he shechts it kasher la'ul. Even though that he didn't specifically say, I want this to be a, an ascent offering, and therefore uprooting it from its original intent to a new uh, intent, he just shechts it as is, without a special intent. It, it by default uh, reverts to being an ola, and it's valid as an ola. Alma, so from that, we can deduce that Rav is of the opinion that you don't have to intentionally uh, um, change the carbon. It, it automatically goes to whatever it's supposed to be. Um, so if that's the case, so why does it have to be that he, uh, 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 that it was already designated to be a, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, to go out to, um, uh, uh, to, to go out into pasture, even without that, as soon as the owner had already um, uh, received atonement with another carbon, then when this is shechted, it should automatically be an, an ola. So anyone says, no, there's a concern. And without the designation of it going into pasture, then, I, then there's another problem. You're right. It automatically should become an ola. But we're afraid that 
somebody's going to think the same even before the owner has had his atonement. And that's not true because if the owner hasn't had his atonement, this carbon, <coughs> even if he now designated a second carbon and is ready to bring the second one, if, if this one is brought as an, uh, uh, um, without special intent, it would still be, an, uh, it'd still be the atonement offering, the asham. And therefore, um, it, it, we don't allow this to revert to become a, an ola unless it was after the moment that it was designated to God into a special pasture to get a blemish and then become an ola. Uh, so the Gemara says, we're not tame around. How do we know that we're concerned that uh, after uh, uh, the atonement, immediately before, the, like before the atonement, and that the owner still it requires this carbon for himself? To Tanan, as we learned. Hashem Shemes And Hashem, this type of sin offering, the, the other type of sin offering, not a classic chatas, <laughs> that the owner had died. So now, now this uh, is ownerless, doesn't need anybody, for, it doesn't need to atone for anyone. Hashem Eskap Or if the owner brought another carbon uh, to atone for themselves. In other words, they, they designated uh, animal A as their Hashem and then either lost it or forgotten, they designated animal B and brought animal B. So now animal A is a designated usham without any need to atone for anyone because either the owner died or the owner already had it, a, an atonement with a different carbon. So your Asher Yisai has to go out and to a special pasture to get a blemish. And when it does, it can be sold off and the money used, it gets sold, and the, and the funds go as, a, as an, a, a, an ascent offering gift. Rabbi Leezer, I'm a Yomis. However, Rabbi Leezer says no. Just in, in, in just as in a chat, as a regular sin offering, the halach is this animal has to be put down; it dies. So too in regards to the uh, um, uh, the uh, asha. However, Rabbi Yeshua, I'm a Yimach, Rabbi Yavi, Rabbi Dama Rabbi Yeshua says no. You can sell it and bring with its funds an olah bedamavin. Um, Only with its funds you can bring it as an olah avul gufa loy, but with uh, but you can't actually bring this animal itself as an ola. And that's going to be the distinction between the first and third opinion. So why? The gazar la'acha kapara, kapara. Because he says, look, if you're going to bring this animal itself as an ascent offering, you may end up doing it before the owner has already received his atonement. Meaning, if this fellow uh, designated animal A as his, as his atonement offering forgot, designated animal B. And now he says, you know what, I'm going to bring animal B. He didn't yet get an atonement, but animal A is already fallen out of grace for his for his karma. So he says, okay, I'm going to bring animal B. So then we say, okay, so animal A automatically becomes an ascent offering. And we may end up bringing it before he's, he's atoned for with animal B. And then animal A becomes his ascent offering. And he doesn't know it. And so therefore, we don't allow, uh, Rabbi Shua is not going to allow that animal itself to be brought. So too, over here, it has to be nitikalari. You really send it out. And only if inadvertently it was brought, that it would be a valid carbon shmami. So based on this, we have now established that Rav is going to say that akira. you do not need to intentionally uproot it. It's just that it would automatically become uprooted. Esavei Rav so Chista challenged Rav Huna, who said this in the name of Rav. What about our Mishnah? In our Mishnah, it says if he shechted the animal, he shechted the animal, and uh, 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 and realized after he already brought it as a pesa that everybody in the group somehow disappeared, went to another group, became tummy, whatever. So now we turn to Ayin Gimel at base, but Tani Allah, and we learned about that. Bechol. It, 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 our case in our Mishnah, if it was a weekday, not on Shabbos, it's automatically an invalid korban. It's automatically invalid. It's an invalidation in the uh, intrinsic to the the body of the animal itself, and therefore a, a, an invalid korban. You saw if it gets burnt. Now, so if you say that you have to have stated that it's a pesach that become that it became a shalomim, so. Hi Pesach. So it's just a, 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 a Pesach, even though that it should have reverted to become a Shalomim, but it didn't because you never stated, never intentionally said, I want it to be a Shalomim. They keep in the less labalim. And now it's a Pesach without any owners. And uh, so nobody can eat it. And the basis of a Pesach is that it needs to be eaten. So it's an invalid Pesach. So it makes sense you burn it right away. 
Eli Amris, but Lebe Akira, but if you are right, that Rav said that you don't have to um, state that I change it from what it is, but ra- rather it automatically becomes what it's supposed to be, a shalomim. So, uh, uh, so as soon as the, the group left, this animal uh, reverted automatically to being a shalomim. So why is it considered invalid that you burn it right away? Tomorrow we'll try and answer this question. Have a good